honored that Jake asked me to speak on his behalf. Um, I first met Jake uh, almost four years ago when my wife and I invited several students during the summer to our house for dinner. And I recall right after dinner, uh, my wife said, that guy is going to go places. He's a leader, he's bright, conscientious, he uses his napkin right. Um, <laughs> and we knew from that day that we had a winner on our hands. And over these last four years, um, I've just watched how his influence for our team and our whole university has been so positive. Um, he's been through tough times, you know, what we went through the last couple of years until Coach Carvel came and, and turned this whole team around. And Jake stuck through everything, not only as a hard fighter, but also as a quiet leader. And so it was no surprise uh, this season when he emerged as the captain, not only in terms of his teammates' favor, but also in terms of the respect that he had from the whole coaching staff. Uh, I've been involved as a faculty mentor for UMass Hockey for 20 years, and in those 20 years, I've seen some shining stars, and Jake is certainly the best of the best. I reached out to uh, some people who work closely with him, who see him in a different light than we do when we see him on the ice. Uh, Matt Comer wrote to me, and he said, uh, this guy is the real deal. He is a hard worker. He's diligent, he's attentive, he's conscientious. Jill, who he worked for in, in marketing and communications, had tremendously positive comments to say about him. And the true test is the person who sees Jake the most, and that is Josh Penn, the equipment manager, who probably spends more time with our players than their families ever did. <clears throat> and Josh had the comment, I wish there were 25 more Jakes on our team every year. He is the best of the best. He's a leader, he has had such a positive influence. He's one of these people that we're gonna have tremendous pride to know that he's going on to be an alum of the University of Massachusetts and a very, very powerful force among the UMass Minutemen hockey team. Thank you, Jake. As a hockey coach, you, you love the, uh, when your, your players win academic awards. I love it. Um, our team had over a 3.3 GPA this year. And you don't do that unless you have leadership from the older players, holding standards. Jake did a great job of that. Um, in this job, one of the great parts of being a college coach is the quality kids you get to uh, deal with every day, and day in, day out. And uh, I love that part of it. But a few rise to the top, and, and Jake is one of those kids. He's an absolute gem of a person. Uh, much like Doc said, when my wife and I met Jake early on in my time here, uh, when he walked away, we both kind of looked at each other and so said, that's, that's a first-class kid. He's proven that uh, the entire time, uh, the two years we've been together. So as you heard, we had a very young team this year. You all know that. And I went into this year with the mindset that, you know, we're probably not going to have a captain. And, and I, I've seen it before. And I uh, thought that's how we were going to do things this year. It's not the best way to do it. It's probably the worst way to do things. But uh, I wanted to see someone rise to that level. And it uh, wasn't until, I think, January, late January, that it became too obvious. And so I called the team together and called them in and said, guys, you know, our time's come. The guy has risen, and the name of Jake Horton as a team captain. The room absolutely erupted. They all jumped on him and praised him as he should. And they all looked at me like, you dummy, it took you this long to figure out. <laughs> and, uh, it's no surprise, uh, we finished the, the end of the year very strong. I think we were 6-2-1 in our last uh, nine games, and I think that was after I named him the captain, so I'm kicking myself that I didn't do that a little bit. But he's a, a shining example, very proud of him. Uh, he'll be a friend for life, and congratulations, Jake. Great job. First off, I just wanted to thank UMass Luncheon Committee, UMass Athletic Department, and all those that take part in this. I know it sometimes goes unnoticed with all the hard work that you guys put in day in and day out, but as a student athlete at this school, I understand that it does take a true commitment, and I wanted to thank you guys for all that. Secondly, I wanted to thank Coach Carvel, Doc Halgen for the great words and nice words that they said. Um, like Doc mentioned, he was, he was the first uh, faculty member that I met here when I got on campus in August of 2014. It took him less than a week to invite me over to his home, have dinner there. And it was right then where it kind of hit me that I, I made the best decision of my life to come to UMass. The caringness and graciousness that Doc showed made me feel that I was at home for only being on campus for one week. 
It was something that I was forever grateful for, and the relationship that I've been able to create with Doc over the, over the four years has been unlike any other. Having him around the rink, walking out of the tunnel every night for games, seeing Doc there, it's, it's a true testament to how much he cares about this program, our school, and UMass in general. Secondly, Coach Carvel, I know we've only had two years together, but it's been two great years. Um, you know, our, our first year was one that we might want to forget about with only five victories, but you can't turn a program around in one, in one season. Um, this last year, I think, attested to that. We, we were able to accomplish some great things. I learned a lot of lessons within the last two years and over my four years here. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot what it's like balancing a, the academics load of, of a college athlete, dealing with the athletics, as well as trying to balance a social life in there. But overall, the, the most important lesson that I've learned, and Coach Carvel has preached it quite a bit, is leaving, leaving a stamp on the program, the university that you were at, and knowing that the day when you walk off campus and graduate, <laughs> you left it in a better place better situation than when you got in. I can, I can honestly say that I will walk off with, with pride and something that will ever hold a, a special spot in my heart, and that's UMass, the hockey program, and the, and the school in general. So I want to thank you guys for this opportunity and for allowing it to be such a success and a very memorable senior year for me. So thank you guys. You were like brothers. <laughs> I teach accounting at the Eisenberg School of Management. I'm actually brand new faculty. Um, I just started in the fall, so this is the first time that I've ever been um, asked to come to one of these events. But I'm very honored that Bridget asked me. Um, Bridget is just a remarkable student. I could say so many positive things about her, um, but the first thing that comes to mind is that she always comes to class with a smiling face, and we all know that not all students are like <laughs> Some of them just look very miserable, especially to be in an accounting class. So thank you, Bridget, for always smiling. Um, she's always been very professional. I saw her give her first class presentation yesterday, and she did an outstanding job. I wasn't at all surprised, and I'm not surprised that she's getting this award. So congratulations, and you deserve it. Here we are, Bridget. <coughs> Uh, as mentioned, Bridget's a uh, redshirt junior. Uh, seems if you know anything about Canadian athletes, they are pretty tough-nosed kids, uh, and Bridget certainly fills that bill. She also played ringette, so you know she might be able to go on the ice and challenge you a bit. <laughs> um, Bridget came to us. Jeez, as a little freshman who was like, I don't know if I can you know, really succeed here. She claimed that she wasn't a very good student. <laughs> Not really the case. Uh, and I remember her and her parents saying, well, you know, she's okay in the classroom, but you're gonna have to stay on her because she, you know, she's gonna need a lot of help. And throughout her career, she's been a stellar student starting in public health and progressing through the time in which she injured herself. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. Uh, she's always had this drive. Uh, and to be a multi-eventer, a heptathlete, a pentathlete, you have to have tremendous drive. She works her butt off. Uh, and one of the great things that I really appreciate about having Bridget uh, on our team at our university is that I never have to worry about her effort, about how much she wants to win. For three years, she's always finished second in the heptathlon, in the pentathlon. She's taking, taken a lot of silver medals. And last year, she injured herself doing sled pulls in the summer because why would you not be in spikes, which is not advisable, don't do that. Uh, and she banged up her foot. So I said, okay, Bridge, here's the deal. You should probably redshirt a year. I don't want to redshirt. I can't redshirt. I have to win now. But uh, one of the things that she's, as 
dedicated of a student she is. She's a student of the sport and she trusts. And one of the things that's paramount to a coach-athlete relationship is trust. The trust that we have your best interests at heart. And she knows that. And from that statement, you know, that conversation, we had a plan. And she worked really hard during her redshirt year. She got stronger. She became technically proficient, uh, more proficient rather, and really set the course for this year. Uh, last summer, she made uh, Canada Games, which occurs every four years. Um, I went out to watch her and uh, actually two more of our freshmen that came in. And she was a big reason for that. Uh, she That had been one of her goals from the onset of coming to school here. I want to make Canada Games. And she did that. She hurt her elbow in the process again. <laughs> Summertime and her doing stuff just Nothing this summer, nothing. <laughs> but it became a trend for reaching objectives. And that was one of the objectives that were long set and we accomplished it. And this year, starting just through fall training, her work ethic, her ability to hurdle, her ability to just focus uh, and be organized was so apparent. Uh, so. Working through the year, we started out the year at uh, Harvard, and <coughs> just her ability to do, and I'm like, huh, she's, she's doing some things right now. Okay, and she was leading the way. She was showing freshmen, this is how you do it. This is how we compete at UMass. This is how we train, this is how we compete, this is how we perform and win. And breaking the school record <coughs> was tremendous. But what I'll tell you is, Winning the Atlantic 10 title was absolutely just the icing on the cake. Uh, and then winning ECACs uh, with being behind. I mean, she was behind going into the 800 meters. And the girl from Liberty is a very good athlete. We did not have a great day at ECACs. And I remember the girl and a couple other girls coming up to me saying, hey, can your girl run an 800? And I was like, eh. <laughs> she can run a little bit. And then one of their parents said, hey, yeah, she can run. And she needed to win by quite a margin. And boy, when the gun went off, she booked it. She ran like she needed to run to be the competitor that she is. And one of the things, if you ever come to our meets, which I hope you do, this weekend, bring some uh, earmuffs. It'll be sunny though, bring your sunblock. You will hear me anywhere at the track. And one of the things that our kids always remark, Coach Jackson, all the noise, I still heard you screaming. And it held true last year for some of our multis, and it held true for Bridget when she was running her 800 because I could see that. I'm like, you gotta go. And she went. And to win, uh, you know, the ECAC is a very large conference. It spans from Maine all the way down to North Carolina, Julie? Yeah. Sometimes BYU comes. <coughs> Pretty big conference. Oldest conference in the country, older than the NCAA. She competed and really showed those kids that, you know, this is how you do it. So. You know, I'm just always impressed by her. You know, she had two internships. She interned at uh, HSBC up in Nova Scotia last summer uh, and realized that working in a bank is pretty rough. Uh, I'd call her and check in and say, Bridge, how's it going? She's like, oh, I was just walking in shoes and sitting and walking. I'm like, yeah, well, that's not real world, buddy. Uh, the drive, the representation of not only her folks who you know, are staunch supporters of her, but of our program, it is really something to be remarked in this. I, I always, uh, myself and Julie, we will always appreciate the effort and just what she does. <laughs> okay, so I really, I, I thank you all, uh, you know, congratulations. I mean, it's tr this award is really tremendous because at the end of the day, you'll always be able to skate 
when you're an old man in hockey league, you know, it won't go as fast. She might be like a, you know, there's a lady that set the world record at 102 running 60 meters. Probably be Bridget out there. Um, the bones get old, but the experiences you have here uh, that you get from this university will literally last you a lifetime. And this is why we do it. So I really appreciate you all supporting our kids. And uh, we support, we appreciate you kids just doing all this hard work. So thank you all. Thank you very much to the Sport Luncheon Committee for uh, selecting me for this award and also to the Athletic Department and uh, thank you to Coach Jackson for some kind words and also a bit of a roast, but that's expected. <laughs> and also um, Professor Herzig, thank you uh, very much. Also congratulations to the rest of the athletes who won awards today. Um, it's not easy balancing uh, academics and athletics, but uh, I think we all do a pretty great job. Um, I'm very privileged to be able to do what I do and uh, wake up every day and run track and do what I love while also studying at such a great university. Um, I'm from Canada, like Coach mentioned, and in high school I told my parents that I wanted to run track at a Division One university in the United States, and they laughed a little bit. And <laughs> but they told me that you know if I could make it happen, that they'd support me and. Um, I was able to find my way here and I'm so thankful that you know I didn't take their laughing and, and sort of give up but I uh, but I uh, you know worked hard and and now um, I get to have this experience and uh, work with amazing people like my coaches and my teammates and other athletes in the department um, it's definitely can get stressful um, balancing you know, a workload with school and practice, but uh, my parents did a good job in raising my sisters and I to um, have a strong work ethic, and even though <coughs> I might be seen as a little stubborn sometimes, and I take what, uh, my, what I do in athletics and getting through a heptathlon or a pentathlon, you have to be very mentally tough, and you have to be able to deal with adversity, and if you, you know, uh, hit a hurdle and, and you can't finish your race, you have to be able to come back and finish your events and be a, a good competitor and a good sport. Um, and I take that into the classroom as well and I and I try to do my best. And, uh, and I want to, as Jake was saying, you know, leave this school and, and hopefully uh, improve the team, make the team a little better. And, and I want, you know, people to remember the things that I've done and and uh, leave my name in that record book is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just very grateful that you know I get to do this, and it's very amazing, and um, it's a very small population out there who get these kinds of opportunities. So um, again, just thank you very much, um, and uh, yeah, thank you for this award. <laughs> Congratulations to uh, Jenna and, and Devin and Bridget and Jake. Um, you guys make us proud. And this is, these are some of our greatest supporters, but there are thousands of others out there who um, celebrate you guys every day for the things that you do for us. So congratulations, and uh, we're very proud of you.